guys, in this video I'll be showing you how I achieved this pattern on the peony dresser. Just on this drawer here. Hi guys! So to start off, I use a stamp from the Bohemia stamp set um, to get this pattern. And I'll show you how I stamped and painted that. But let's talk about where I got my inspiration to do this in the first place. These are some beautiful antique rolls of wallpaper that I got from a historical settlement that I used to work at. And these were kind of like the inspiration for how I painted the Bohemia stamp in. So here's one of them. Isn't that beautiful? And unfortunately, I only got one roll of each pattern, so my dream would be to fill a room with the, like wall to wall with all this wallpaper, but I only have one roll of each print. Made in Canada by CWM. Oh, listen to that sound. That's just, I love that sound. <laughs> and this one is one of my favorites. It is a William Morris wallpaper garden craft right there. Isn't it beautiful though? I wish I had like a dozen rolls of this stuff. The color is just extraordinary. It's like this not purple, not blue, kind of, I guess, in indigo, perhaps. And it's, it contrasts the white and the pattern so huge. Just love it. This is a prime example of like, kind of like, you can see like misprint. Well, it's not really quite misprint, but doesn't this look like um, painterly roses a little bit? But you can see like how the ink doesn't quite line up in some places where it ought to, but it's just beautiful regardless. Oh, this is <laughs> another one of my favorites. Um, it's another William Morris, and it is one of my favorites because it is featured in the Little Women Women uh, movie from the 90s. It's in their kitchen, so that makes me love this role even more so because I loved that movie growing up. Another William Morris. This would be like really fun to replicate with stamps too. You could just like use a dotting tool and uh, to get some more depth in the background. Yeah, so that was my inspiration for how I went and painted in the, the dresser drawer. And if you don't know what dresser I'm talking about, you might want to check out a previous video that I did entitled The Peony Dresser. So here we go. So I got a piece of wood that I'm working with and it's this interesting shade of blue. And I got my stamp from Bohemia here. And I'm going to start off by using a light colored ink that is easy to cover to do my initial stamping with. I'm starting in the middle of my project, like roughly because if I start on one corner, on one end, sorry, and if I'm off a degree, by the time I end up on the other side of the board, we're gonna end up with this face. So that's easy to fix, just go in and, and like, I have to like stamp underneath the stamp, but just to, to keep things simple, I'm gonna try to keep things as straight as I possibly can and start in the middle. So on the stamp, I'm going to use the center of these two little diamonds at the top to line up with the free edge of my work surface and that way I know that it is square and it's not perfect. I want to be as close to straight as I can be so that it doesn't end up wonky at the ends and the pattern's kind of straight. The line pattern up and I should be lining up with the edge here along with going through the middle of the diamonds just like I did with my first impression. Now at this time you can start thinking about what is the second color you're going to use here and I'm going to go with pink myself. I have that really flat blue color there. It's not a funky wild color, it's, it's, it's nice and subtle and I'm going to go in there and contrast that with a 
crazy neon Pepto-Bismol color shade of pink. So, that's done. This is my color going in with. So now I am going to hand paint all of the space like around the flowers. This is time consuming. I mean, these guys wanted to see this. Now these guys know how crazy I am. It's time consuming, but it's relaxing. It can go in here with a bigger brush than this too, I think. So I'm going to. So you're just trying to avoid getting paint in the little like oval shape and the flowers and these little crosses, I guess. What are the chances that I'd have a clean brush that would be optimal for this job? I think I'm just going to outline my shape. Woo! Oh, there's paint on the shirt. Next. Okay, so that's like one eighth of my work surface. Is it weird that I kind of like it like that? <laughs> it looks like some sort of weird battering. <laughs> Cheetah stripe, cheetah blocks or something. I'm having fun isolating every shape one at a time. I think that's it. Okay, so here we go. This is what it looks like so far. And I'm gonna go ahead and choose a, another color. Go in with crazy green. And I'm going to be putting the green in the center of the flowers and filling in all those little X's. And I lost some of the uh, shape of my little X's and I can take this time to kind of get them back. So I'm gonna leave the petals of the flower and the little tear-shaped uh, oval shapes and you can see that my pink paint, I didn't bother going in with a second coat to even out the color there because I'm going to be going in with sandpaper later to distress that. So I don't need to have a perfect coat because I'm going to be roughing that up anyway. And this is another one of those projects where you could stop any point with these steps and I think it looks I'm going ahead and I'm doing all of the horizontal lines first on my and I'm going to go ahead with the vertical afterwards. Hey Mom. 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 Yeah. It looks pretty. Thank you. Can you put me some popcorn? Okay, so here it is at this point. I'm liking how it looks just here. Is another point you could stop at if you wish. I'm gonna let this sit and dry thoroughly and then I'm gonna go back in and stamp the top. Okay guys, I went in here and decided to do a different version of it. So this is kind of like the tidier, possibly quicker, I'm not sure yet. So I went in and did my background pink and then stamped purple ink and colored my little centers of my flowers green and the crosses green and now I'm going in with the blue color and filling this in with a lot more precision than the other method. So I just uh, I do it in a different way and do a tidier version of it to give you guys some more options if you're more uh, neat and tidy is what you're going for or if you want to go for like a a messy, funky version. <laughs> I smudged a test stand to see if the paint was dry or not. Needless to say, the paint was not dry quite yet. I mixed some purple um, ink with um, provincial and the mixing white and tomato. And going in just like I did beginning, I'm starting in the middle, hovering it over, and doing my best to line everything up, but if it's not lined up, that's fine. Now, in my opinion, I think it's more important not to break my purple ink lines than it is to actually have things lined up. Because, like I said, this is the messy, like, misprint version. 
husband's actually thinking about turning this into a drawer face, so maybe I'll try to line up the drawer handle with that boo-boo fix -boo. it. didn't love my color choices. They, I mean, I love bright colors and I, I gravitate towards bright colors, but I think I should have stuck with some more neutral colors. Oh, I'm starting to get comfy here. I think we got the technique down. I think I, I, show, I was able to show that clearly, but I was not in love with the end result because my color choices, I thought my color choices were like a little off. But that being said, because it was so loud and bright, I think it made the instructions a little more clear for you guys if you wanted to like replicate that look, I think. And thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed, maybe consider subscribing. I am going to be putting out videos as often as I can. I have lots of ideas. You should see my art journal. It is just like a backlog of things I want to create. So. There is definitely more material and more content to come.